Hello everyone. So in this video we are going to be looking at six variable k maps. So suppose you have six variables a, b, c, d, e, and f. So these are my six variables. Now let's look at the total number of possible combinations for these six variables. So the combinations is given by the formula n, where n is my number of options, zero and one. So I have two options to the power of the number of variables. So two to the power of six is sixty-four. So I have 64 different combinations. So the figure over here that's given is similar to the five variable k-maps figure. So in five variable k-map, we had two four k-maps stacked on top of each other. But for this, we have four k-maps stacked on top of each other. That is, they're overlapping themselves. So we have four cross four k-maps, each of these. And we have four of these four cross four k-maps. So each of these k map represents a different case. So let's say the first k map. So the first k map represents the case where a b is zero zero, and my second k map is going to represent the case where a b equals zero one, and my third k map is going to be representing the case where a b equals one zero, and my fourth k map is going to be representing the case where my a b equals one one. So now how will this work? So suppose I have one in each of these k maps. So then I can group all of these together since they're overlapping themselves. So this is how it would work. So this is my function that's given as min terms. So fun a min term expression represents all the rows. The values are one, and these are my four k maps. So each k map represents a case. For example, the first k map is represents zero zero. Second one is zero one. My third k map represents the case one zero. My fourth k map, the case one one. So now I'm going to fill in all the rows given to me the function with the value one, since they are the min terms. So min terms represents the value that is one. So it's one for a two and two table. So marking all these values with one. So as you can see, thirty seven, forty five, forty four, thirty four, forty seven. So all of these get a value of one. So I'm marking this for the fourth k map now. So the remaining spaces, that is the empty ones, that are left over. So I can mark them with zero. So here I'm using a different color so that it becomes easy to differentiate between them. So I'm marking the empty spaces with zeros in all the k maps. So in my a map, while grouping, I look for the largest possible groupings. So I look for the common between all the four k maps, because that would ultimately give me the largest possible grouping. So this is the common one between all the four k maps. So I label it as one. So I look for other possible groupings in my first k map, and I see that this is one grouping, and then I also see that this is another possible grouping. So I'm going to label this as three, and then I see my last possible grouping is a different color. So this is going to be labeled as four. So let's look at the expressions for each of these labels. So my first label since it involves all the four k maps. I'm going to exclude a and b. So it's just going to be d and f because they're always one. And my second label. So my second label. I see the first k map. So it's going to be a naught and b naught. And then I also see that c is always zero and e is always zero, so I'm going to have c naught and e naught. And for my third expression, I'm again looking at the first k map, so it's going to be a naught, b naught. And then I see that c is always zero and f is always zero, so c naught, f naught. And my fourth expression is going to be a naught, b naught again. And I see that e is always zero and f is one, so it's going to be e and f. So in my third k map, I see that this is one possible grouping, and I'm going to label it as five. And then I see that I can also have this as another grouping. So I'm going to label this as six. And then I see that this grouping is common for all the four k maps. So I've marked it in aqua, and I'm going to label this as seven. So for my fifth expression, since I'm looking at just a third and fourth k map. I have a common, so a is one, and then I have c and d. As c and d are always ones. For my sixth expression, 
So I'm looking at just the dot k map. I have a and b naught, and then I see that c is always one, and then f is always zero. So I have f naught, and for the seventh expression, I see that it's common all four. So I'm excluding a and b, and I see that c is always zero, e is always zero, and then f is one. So now I uh, start grouping my second k map. So that's one possible grouping, and I label it eight. And then this is another possible grouping. I label it nine. And then I look at my fourth k map. And I see that this is another possible grouping and label it 10. I seem to have missed this grouping, but this also constitutes the label 5. Now, let me look at the expressions for each of these labels. So, the 8 is looking at just the second K map, so it's going to have A naught B. And then I see that C is always 1 and E is always 1, so I have C and E. For the ninth label, I'm looking at just the second K map, so A naught and B again. And then I see that e is always 1 and f is always 1 and then for the 10th expression I am looking at the 4th k map so a and b and then I see that c and f are always 1 now, function f was given in min term expression so it can be written in SOP form or sum of product form so that's nothing but the sum of all the 10 expressions so 1, 2, two, 9, 10 so all the 10 expressions so my function f is going to be d f that's my first term plus a naught b naught c naught e naught that's my second expression plus a naught b naught c naught and f naught that's my third expression plus a naught b naught e naught f that's my fourth expression plus a c d the fifth expression and sixth a b naught c f naught and then I'm adding my seventh expression that's C naught, E naught, F. And then my eighth expression will be A naught, B, C, E. So B, C, and E. And then my ninth expression is going to be A naught, B, E, and F. And finally, my tenth expression is A, B, C, and F.